Welcome back to the Unconventional Money Moves podcast. I have Stephanie Sylvester with us today. And what Stephanie has been doing is she started a movement around an asset-based approach to the Black Wealth creation by taking three pillars. The first is helping Black professionals get positions of access and power, helping them diversify their income, and creating a space where they can be vulnerable in their journey to wealth. Her company, Avatar Buddy, is using generative AI to close the achievement gap and address vexing social justice issues around building wealth for the Black community. So super happy to have Stephanie on the Unconventional Money Moves podcast. And I mean, my big question is like, how did you come up with this Avatar Buddy? Have you been working on this a while? Because AI has been around for quite some time, but now it's just starting to take the main stage. And a lot of people aren't aware that AI has been in the game since like, I think IBM started doing AI like 50, 60 years ago. Yes, you're right. Um, it's been, I think if I, if my history has me right, sometime in the late 1950s, early 60s is when they started doing AI. And um, I've been working on, on Avatar Buddy since 2016. And the the reason why I started this was trying to figure out how we could get more people to take help and use the services uh, the organization I was working with was um, providing. And what I what I found in my research was that if people don't believe in themselves, they don't think they're worthy of the help. And so I then obviously went back and said, well, how do you get people to think that they're worthy? And what I came up with is if you if you feel good about yourself, if you believe in yourself, then 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 you're going to take the help and you're going to feel worthy. And a way to create that kind of self-efficacy, self-agency and so forth is if you have a good mentor. And most of us start off life with amazing parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, and then we evolve to teachers and so forth. But what if you didn't have that? Um, and I thought, well, I'm a technologist. I use technology to solve other problems. Why not solve this problem with technology? Let's create a digital mentor. And when I started my journey, everybody thought that I was absolutely insane, that it was not possible. And in December, 2023, we finally figured out how to create digital mentors. And we, we were able to do it in a very cost-effective and quick turnaround. And that's like actually huge because some of the things that we're seeing with OpenAI and all that stuff, right? They seem simple and they seem kind of trivial, but those things are uber complicated to do and to get it to do it consistent, repeatable is not for the faint of heart. So uh, I'm super excited about the fact that we've been able to, to, to to be able to create digital humans, to create digital mentors for anybody that wants one and just seeing what it can do. So I'll pause there so I don't talk for the entire their entire podcast. So what what exactly were you researching when you were developing this? Um, so I did a lot of uh, research about uh, um, people, uh, child development, teen development, human development, how do how do people interact with help? I also went to the communities that usually get left out when they do research, right? So I didn't just go and ask like uh, a person that grew up in a in an impoverished background, like, hey, how how did you become successful? Uh, I I also went to those background those communities and I asked those people right now in that are living living the life like what's the challenge why why aren't you going for help and what i found was that most people didn't believe in themselves then i i um took that knowledge and i started asking people particularly african americans who were uber wealthy how did they become that way and Almost every every single one talked about one person in their life that believed in them more than they believed in themselves. And there, then I started looking for research around that. And there's quite a number of research around um, if you believe, if somebody has some uh, person in their life that believes in them more than they believe in themselves, 
they can overcome any adversity. But conversely, even if they're full of resource, if they don't have anybody that believes in them more than they believe in themselves, they're going to struggle with overcoming adversity. And when you start unpacking that, you you just you just get this wealth of information and a lot of things that happen in this world start making sense. Mm -hmm. So what are these sort of like obstacles that people need to overcome other than just like having someone believe in yourself and believe in themselves rather than like they kind of feel alone in the world? Well, I mean, so some of them might be um, that their parents got divorced and they're in this middle of this tense relationship from as they grew up and they they don't know how to create healthy bonds or it could be that they've been abused mm -hmm. um, or they could be neglected either deliberately or unintentionally. Um, they could be, have grown up in such poor circumstances that they weren't able to get access to the resource they needed to really excel and 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 um, reach their full potential. Hmm. So an example could be, uh, let's say I'm 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 a person that grew up in a single mom household. My dad is absent and he goes in and out of jail. Whenever he's back, he's out of jail. He engages in activity and he takes me along with it. So now I'm thinking that these behaviors are normal. Um, obviously not, and. When he disappears, life is difficult. When he comes back, life is okay. Um, I, I go to school. My teachers, because I'm a little bit hyper, the teachers don't um, like me in their classroom because I'm disruptive. They're teaching too slow. Or maybe they might not even know the content of what they're teaching and I'm holding them accountable. But the way I'm doing it is in a disrespectful manner. And so all of a sudden now I'm a troublemaker. I get marginalized. It just... It's just like a wealth of things that happen. And it's, it's usually not just one thing. It's just a lot of combination of things. And so how do people that have those circumstances overcome them? Um, if they don't have the resources to go to therapy, they don't have, they don't have a grandparent to go take them and put them in a nice home, um, you know, provide some kind of consistency, then they need somebody to believe in them. And most people that have overcome trauma in their life have said that they had somebody that believed in them more than they believed in themselves. I felt like you were describing me a little bit. I was in a divorce house. I would always get my report card and this check mark for like, is a board nation would be on there. I look at like other people's report cards. I'd be like, I'm the only one that has this check. I must be special. I didn't even know what it meant. <laughs> Yeah, I, didn't realize, and, I didn't realize it was a bad thing. Well, well, see, and, and that's the other thing, right? Um, what kind of meaning does the society attach to certain things that happen to you? Um, yeah, and the same thing. My parents are divorced. And when my parents got divorced, I processed that as a good thing because I was like, now I have two houses to live in. And none of my friends had two houses to live in. And so I thought it was like amazing. I was like, I got two houses. You only have one. I mean, but that's what happens when, if, you, if you're processed, if you're living in a space where there's no meaning attached to things as they happen, so they just happen and, and, and so forth, yeah. But like someone might say, like Stephanie, isn't there like a lot of programs out there for these children to take advantage of? And why are these programs not working? <laughs> well... Well, th that that's that's exactly the problem that I that I try to figure out how to solve and got to Avatar Buddy. So, yeah, there are lots of programs out there. They're well run. They're they're pretty well staffed. Um, they have some some funding. I won't say they have the all the funding that they need. Um, and so, why are they not there? And it's because part of it is the the kids don't see the need to like. Why study? I'm I'm just going to end up in jail. I'm going to die before I'm 25. Like, what's the point, right? You know, uh, you know, if you don't grow up in a household where people are reinforcing that you have a future, then 
what do you think? And if you happen to be around, live in a, uh, an environment where people die constantly, like people get into 40 is a major deal. Um, then, then you have a different approach to life. I mean, I, I will say one of the examples that, that really got me into gear was I don't spell very well and I hated studying for my spelling test. And my mom was like, you have to know how to spell. And, and my comeback at like, I don't know, seven or eight was, I'll just have a secretary write all my letters for me. <laughs> Back then there was such a thing as a secretary. And, and my mom's like, without missing a beat. So how are you gonna know if the secretary wrote the letter correct and, and didn't spell, misspell anything? Checkmate. <laughs> now you can just I, put it in the chat GPT and ask it. Now I can, but back back then I couldn't. No chat GPT. No, yes, exactly, and and that's the whole idea. So, what is your background? How did you learn all this, like professional so, background? So, so, so my professional background is I have almost thirty years of IT experience. I was CIO in my most recent company, and then before that, I had different roles in IT leadership, IT quality, uh, software testing, uh, uh, document that, uh, what do you, oh my God, testing and documentation. So back when software was more complicated to use, they used to have this big manual that came with your software. I think they still do that, No, except nobody uses it anymore. And I was one of the people that would help write those manuals for some of those softwares. Yeah, we had one guest on here who's in tech and he joined the Navy and he said he literally had to like walk around with a notebook with instructions and he went to different people and he'd have to like search the notebook to certain pages because people didn't have like a database to go to to figure out how to do things. Like he's like, I would just literally walk around this big binder we would find the page to figure out how to do certain things. So a lot of people don't even realize how lucky we are to have pretty much everything at our fingertips. At the same time, though, it doesn't seem like people are getting any smarter. Yes. And and that's that's kind of something else we we taught about um when we were building out Avatar Buddy was how does it help increase empathy? And um, you know. When we think of when we talk about self love, we talk about the people that um, have so much hatred in inside themselves that they decide that they want to um, kill other people or just rain destruction on other people, and and so xenophobia, homophobia, sexism, racism, all of those things are byproducts of people hating themselves so much that they feel the need to attack other people. And so if you had a tool that makes you feel good about yourself, reinforces you, if you have to ask the same question 15 times, it never criticizes you. It says, here, no worries. Let me tell you how to do it. And, and, and it can kind of figure out that you're, you're asking the same question over and over. It does not say the same exact thing every single time. If you ask the, if you ask the um, avatar buddy a question, Every time you ask the question, it's slightly different, slightly different variation. And then we have the ability for you to put it into different personas. And when you put it into different personas, it changes how it responds, even though the essence of the, the response is the same across all the responses. Mm -hmm. So you researched this and you went now, like what are these mostly like poverty stricken communities that you're seeing this in? Or, I mean, there's wealthy people out there who have messed up kids too because their parents are never home and they just throw money at all. The They're like, here, I bought you this. I bought you that. I pay for this. I pay for that. But that doesn't replace time with your children. Exactly. And um, so what we did was we started with the, 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 the poorer communities because when was the last time you heard a solution designed for them that actually involved them in the whole production process. I, I, I've not been able to find any solution that like they're in at the beginning doing the requirements. They're in there helping us figure out how to develop it and they're in there helping us test it. I mean, <laughs> usually what happens is 
somebody comes up with a bright idea, says, we will do this intervention to this neighborhood or to these people, and then they have no say in it. And by the way, if you want my money, you must do it this way. And I, it just, it just, it's like, I mean, it's just dignity stripping to, to do that way. So we went to that community and we said, hey, this is what we want to do. What would, what would it look like? And they gave us like a bunch of requirements and actually need to, one of my to do's is to go back to that list that we created back in 2019 and see how many of those features and functionalities we've implemented, what we've changed and what's, what still needs to be implemented. Um, but what we did, ha what we, we, what happened by doing that is, is that we got a perspective that didn't happen. Now, one, we know that from other studies, we know that if you provide a solution that will uplift the poor people, it will uplift everybody else. It will help everybody else. So rather than find a solution that would help um, a wealthy person, we found a solution that would help a poor, a poor kid, and then we can cross-pollinate it into the other socioeconomic um, brackets. So when you're going into these communities, did you literally just like drive there and start knocking on doors? Like what did that oh, no. look like? Oh no, 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 no. Um, I have a, I've been doing philanthropic work since I was a little kid in, in Belize. And when I moved to Miami, I continued doing philanthropic work. And, and so I have relationship with about 150, 180 nonprofits in Miami-Dade County. And so we, we're able to get access to the people through their, um, their, their network and their credibility. Got it. Cause I could just imagine like drive into a somewhere and just knocking on doors and be like, Hey, <laughs> No, that doesn't work. Uh, no, it does that, not you work. Would, uh, <laughs> that would, uh, if you're, if you could, if you could do that, then you have some special superpowers that most people don't have. So you started this in 2019 or 2016, 2016. So eight years later, what has happened over that time? Like how much progress have you made with Avatar Buddy in terms of making a difference in these communities since then? Um, I, for one, uh, we have had one, we've had about 200 kids come through our internship program over the years. And some of them have had access and exposure to AI tools and solution that they wouldn't otherwise have access to. Um, they've learned how to, they've learned agile methodology. So the first few days of every internship is you have to learn about agile. You have to learn about um, about time management. You have to learn about how it, how to work in a virtual environment. You have to learn about how to to find your voice. Those are insistence. So we have stand ups three times a week, and you have to turn your camera on and you have to report out. Even if it's you have to repeat what somebody else has said. Everybody has to speak in the meeting, and I keep track of it, and I make sure the meeting doesn't end until everybody speaks. And it's just like a, it's a very interesting process to see the evolution. The, the first, the first week, nobody wants to talk. Nobody wants to go first by the last week, people are volunteering to go. And, um, their, the, the voice, the confidence in their voice changes. And, mm -hmm. and, and it, it's the, the other really cool thing is, is that, um, we're, we're in the last bits of hiring for this summer. And we have a few people that have been, this is the third summer they're coming back. They, they usually come back and they bring their friends with them. And I was like, this is, so, so we know that we're having some kind of positive impact on them because otherwise, if you taught an internship suck, you wouldn't go back to that internship and you definitely wouldn't be bringing your friend along, your friends along with you. Um, also, so that's part of the, like the back of the house piece of it. Uh, the, the front of the house piece of it is we're seeing that the people that are using our tool in these marginalized communities are having um, 
positive impact that I couldn't even predict. Like I'm very optimistic and I said, yeah, this is going to be a great uh, time saver. It's going to, it's going to be catalytic, but it's even better. So I'll give you an example. This one woman, she uses it to help people adjudicate their, help people get their court cases adjudicated in their favor. So you have, you have something happens, you get a minor traffic violation, some misdemeanor thing, you go to court, um, you don't speak the way the judge speaks, the judge dis, um, it just dismisses what you're saying, you're trying to struggle to say um, what the issue is, the judge just dismisses you because they're, they're on a timer, and, um, and all of a sudden you end up with a fine you can't pay, you don't pay the fine, you get it gets accrued, then you get stopped again, all of a sudden now you're in jail. You're in jail for 10 days, five days, even an overnight, you lose your job. You have a record, you can't get a job back. There, your finances just went sideways. Now, what she's saying is happening is, is that she's putting in the reason, the issues around the court case and uh, the AI is bringing back a response that the person then takes to court and reads, it's at the same language that the way the judge speaks, the judge like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. It's adjudicated in their positive way. They don't lose their job. They don't get fined. Um, they can get employed. You know, to, let's forward that story uh, one step farther. Now, they, they feel good about that. They're looking to apply for a job. Um, she takes their resume, and she takes the um, the the job description and she puts it into the AI and the AI updates the resume to read like the responses on the, the job description. So now people are getting past the first, the first piece of where their resume would just get kicked out because it probably wasn't well written or anything like that. And um, she's saying that people are getting jobs and they're getting jobs with benefits. That's a huge thing. I mean... I you know I take for granted that my job was gonna get have benefits. I just assume that like like, <laughs> like I'm like what do you mean I'm not gonna have any benefits? Of course, um, but that's not the same for everybody in a different parts of segment of society. Mm -hmm. On the flip side of that, someone may argue you're taking away someone to learn how to think on their feet or think critically. Like maybe this avatar buddy could be a crutch that people have to lean on. What would you say to someone who? comes from that point of view i i would say that first of all um are your mentors a crutch no um if you're if you're doing a a class paper and you have your tutors are your tutors a crutch no um if uh if if you're able to um if, if you don't know the content of what you're asking it about it's not going to give you back the right response. So you, you actually are forced to learn more, not less with the AI, because you have to know, know, be on top of what it's telling you. Um, it forces you to be more creative because sometimes you might have to ask it the same question like about four or five times in different ways to get what you want. It's creativity, it's resiliency, tenacity, confidence building, all of that stuff's happening without you having to go to a class where somebody's kind of looking down at you. And even if they're not looking down at you, you you're internalizing that they're looking down at you. All of that stuff goes away. Um, one person said that she, she doesn't even know why she still uses the AI because um, the AI rarely ever marks up her, um, her, her writings anymore. And I was like, wait, what, is it, what does that mean? And she's like, yeah, like when I first started, it had a lot of edits and now it really has any edits. I'm like, wait, so the AI taught you how to write better and you didn't even realize that she learned how to write better. I mean, that's kind of like the power of it, right? Imagine you're an adult and all of a sudden some of these remedial things that have been holding you back gets adjusted and addressed with the AI in an em empathetic um, and love and way, kind of like what would happen if you happen to have been fortunate enough to live in a household where when you're five years old, your parents grooming you and cuddling you and encouraging you and 
building all of those muscles, right? It sounds like to me, what this is doing is leveling the playing field. So like when I was in high school, if you wanted a tutor, you had to pay for a tutor and tutors were pretty expensive. So the people that could afford the tutors were people who were in a better situation. Now the people who are not the best situation qualified for certain programs where they can get free tutoring. Then you have everyone else in the middle who's just kind of like, uh, <laughs> there, there's nothing for me. Oh so my God. <laughs> it seems like the AI could be leveling that playing field for the people who want the help and they are curious and want to learn. They just don't have access to the same resources, but now anyone can have access to those resources. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that has been one of my biggest complaints since I've been working in the philanthropic space. I'm like, what happened to the middle? If you're wealthy, you're good to go. If you're poor, there's lots of services for you. If you can get access, if you can figure out how to access them. But yeah. what if you're in the middle? And now, yes, the AI gives you, leavens a pain field. I now can write just as well as any of my other classmates and I don't have to get five people to edit my my document so I don't I don't have to start um two months before my paper is due because I need to get four people to edit my paper to get it to where it needs to be and I I can now have time to maybe play a sport because I'm not spending all this time working on my paper because that's how long it takes me so yes it's definitely going to level the playing field and 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 Every which way I look at it, whatever negative fallout that 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 will happen, the positives are so much more over um, outweighing it that it's 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 okay to use it. It's absolutely okay to use it. We're starting to see that in the economy in terms of like productivity. Uh, companies are much more productive now, and that's similar to the nineties when the internet came out and it became a lot easier to share and access information. So with AI, we're starting to see people are becoming better workers. They're able to get more done at less time. And when you take time out of the equation, that allows you the scale. And if as an individual using avatar buddy, by using AI, you can scale your skills at an unprecedented speed. Absolutely. Um, it, the, the 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 thing that I talk about now is we use Avatar Buddy to run Avatar Buddy. <laughs> so it takes me about uh, 15 minutes to write a proposal and send it off to a potential customer. It takes me, um, I was able to redo my website and... Um, redo our brand in in two months for $3,800 because I use Avatar Buddy to help me translate what my marketing consultant was telling me. My marketing consultant didn't have to spend a lot of time on, on working with me. So a process that would have been agonizingly six to eight months to two months and costs almost no money. Yeah, speed is important with a lot of items, being able to get things done efficiently and more importantly not only efficiently correctly and if you can do them efficiently and correctly now you can go from where you currently are which could be a bad situation and find yourself in a league of your own now in terms of avatar buddy can anyone use this um who's it who's allowed to use it and like obviously if anyone listens to this that wants to reach out to you where where could they find you so it's designed for organizations. And I say organizations because, um, you know, if technically you can, as a, as a person, buy the avatar and create a digital version of yourself and put all the documents and all the stuff in there. And as you do your work, um, you can continue using it and it will help you. Because because it can it's processing the information the same way you process it based on your personality and worldview, um, you don't have to then edit it edit what it what it brings out. 
Uh, the, the other option, but the big, the big piece of what Avatar Buddy brings to the table is our small language model. And so if you're just random P citizen Joe on the street, you don't care about what, what my um, small, small language model has in it. So it's hard to sell that, right? It's, I, I tell people just go use GPT, um, GPT plus if you don't want to be limited by the amount of queries you can have. Uh, but the people that are benefiting from us is small and mid-sized companies because they don't have the IT department and the IT resources to build out all this customization that comes um, already pre-customized for you. And it's just plug and play. I, I was at, at a presentation where somebody was talking about the steps on how to get uh, implement generative AI in your company. And I was like, oh my God, this guy's giving, giving my speech. What am I gonna talk about? And I was like, I know what I'm gonna talk about. He ended his speech and went, it's gonna take three to five years to do that. And I go, Avatar Buddy has simplified this process so that creating a small language model takes, is as easy as uploading a file into uh, Google Drive and depending on your level of engagement of your organization, three weeks, maybe three months to get what he's talking about. So basically we've, we've simplified creating a small language model. We've mashed up a, a, a couple of large language model. We've trained it to be empathetic and we have the ability to create as many personas as you want, either the persona is a fashion after, after people or just fashion after some job role. Like we have a researcher, we have a broker dealer, we have an interviewer, and we just build them based on what our customers want. This all sounds amazing. So anyone out there, check out the avatar, buddy. Stephanie, you're doing it all. And appreciate having you on. We'll see everyone next time. Bye, everyone.